Oh, hi. We'd like to take a look at the Gibbs real quick, and that is delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. What I'd like to point out here is how we could experimentally determine values. Now, delta G can be determined from this expression. Delta G is equal to negative RT natural log of K. Uh, and R has been measured experimentally over the years, and people pretty much agree on a number, 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. You measure the temperature of your system, and then this is so sweet, you measure the equilibrium constant. So if you have a system with a couple of gases, you measure products over reactants. This gives it to you, and we can go ahead and publish delta G values. Delta H, and this goes way back, this goes way, way back to chem 121 type topics. Delta H is the heat at constant pressure. So we do calorimetry. We go ahead and burn something and measure the heat being given off. So I'll go ahead and write delta H is equal to what well, constant pressure, we call it the heat, Q. So if we want to know something like maybe, oh, the enthalpy of a Cheeto, we take a Cheeto, we give it a spark to get it started, we burn it, and we measure the heat that it gives off. We call that delta H. So these two are very simply uh, determined by experimental data. Now, delta S is a little bit of another story, and particularly for me. Now, what we can do is we can say, look, if we let the system reach equilibrium, then delta G is zero. So you have a reaction out on the table, and it's delta G is equal to zero. Now, that's rather sweet, because what you can do is do an experiment and go ahead and measure delta H, and we can calculate what delta S is. Because rearranging, add T delta S to both sides, divide by the temperature, and delta S, the entropy, is equal to delta H over T. Now, this is extremely difficult to do in real life, and here's why. We need to maintain equilibrium the whole way. Remember, one of the conditions was, hey, delta G is equal to zero. If we don't maintain equilibrium, this number's not zero, it's something else. You might know what it is mo one moment, but you may not know what it is the next, because you've got a reaction going on. You might have it ever-changing. So what we like to say is, have a system where the, here it is, process is continually reversible. So delta H is Q, the heat at constant pressure. But under this condition, what we say is, it's completely reversible. Now imagine this. Imagine if I took some dust, put it inside this little metal, it's an, actually a milk jug, one gallon milk jug, set it on fire so that it gave off heat and flames, maybe even blew the top off. I could measure the heat. I could say, here's the temperature. And so here's the, if you will, the heat that was absorbed by the surroundings. I could measure delta S if the system were at equilibrium the whole time. So what that would mean is I go ahead and light it on fire and say, look, it's expanding a little, but I'm not letting the reaction go 100%. It's something that I could reverse and set back down. It's as though the lid gets blown off a little, and I can set it back down. Lid gets off a little bit more, and I can set it back down. This is a classic problem in engineering where they deal with engines, cylinders going up and down inside of a chamber, and pressures are changing. They say that their cylinder goes up reversibly, like a little, and then back down. Imagine, if you will, there's no air around this. We do it inside of a vacuum. And then you can imagine maybe a little bit better that you can have reversible steps. Now, that's very difficult to do. Often what we do is we do calculations or simulations. Because in real life, if I were to go ahead and light this on fire, imagine that I'm supposed to stop this, oh my goodness, even smaller than the eye could see and say every single step is reversible. So I have this dust, and it's called lycopodium powder. It's ground up fern spore, and it has a large surface area. And I lit a candle in here. I put some of the dust in here, and if I give it a good blast, whoosh, squeeze some air in here, the dust will come in contact with the candle, and it'll go ahead and explode. So let me go ahead and do this, and imagine, if you will, I'm supposed to stop the tape at every fraction of a second and show, hey, it's reversible, and I'm supposed to take measurements at every one of these little steps. So it's very, very difficult to do. Got it.